This world news tonight with Peter Jenning. This probably requires closer attention than some stories. Madame Chiang Kai-shek was on Capitol Hill today. It does sound like a headline from half a century ago, and it would have been then. The former first lady of China and then of Taiwan used to be a fixture in Washington, campaigning against the communists on the mainland who overthrew her husband. Today, at age 95, she was invited back by a number of senators, a gesture that is certainly going to irritate the Chinese government in Beijing. That's important because relations between the United States and China have already hit their lowest point in some time. ABC's Jim Laurie is in Beijing. Nearly every night, the news on Chinese television hammers home the point. U.S.-China relations are bad. It's up to Washington to take concrete steps to repair them. For the Chinese, above all else right now, Taiwan is the issue. To China, Taiwan is a renegade province, and Beijing will simply not drop its objection to the visit to America last month of Taiwan's president. They want a guarantee it'll never happen again. Taiwan is the most sensitive part of the Chinese anatomy. Uh, this is the issue they'll go, that China will go to war over. Since 1972, six U.S. administrations have affirmed there is only one China, and its capital is Beijing. Any hint of change in that policy sends Chinese leaders into a frenzy. The Chinese consider it uh, uh, threatening to the core. Uh, it's tremendously important to them, and I don't think Americans really grasp why. What Americans do understand is the issue of jailed human rights activist Harry Wu. His detention poses enormous problems for the Clinton administration. While it may choose to overlook the plight of some Chinese dissidents, Harry Wu is different. An American citizen, he's well known in Washington. And the administration's hands are tied. It can't move in the direction of improving, repairing the relationship until something is done with Harry Wu. Failure to repair relations would have several consequences. It would end any hope the U.S. may have to improve human rights in China. It would also make it more difficult to halt Chinese weapons sales to Iran and other countries. And perhaps most importantly, Failure could also lead to reduced business in one of the world's fastest growing markets. Billions of dollars in aircraft and communication sales are at risk. Tensions have been heightened further by influential forces on both sides who want a tougher stand, by powerful members of the U.S. Congress who seek to punish China, and here by elements of the military and security forces who feel compromise shows weakness and is damaging to Chinese pride. Jim Laurie, ABC News, Beijing. Back in just a moment.